Welcome to the first podcast for Bent Motorsports. My name is David Beckett, and I'm the owner of Bent Motorsports. And I want to introduce all the guys that are with me. We've got three of them. We'll start off with Jake, Jacob Huntsinger. We call him Zing. What's going on? So thanks for, thanks for having me. What you do. Jake's kind of my right-hand man in the shop, makes sure everything gets done. Um, he calls himself the shop foreman. I call him the assistant to the shop foreman, but... Yeah, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. Uh, I guess you could say I kind of just get the jobs done around here, you know. He lays them out on the table, and uh, we bring the vehicles in. And Well, what about your, you know, where, 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 how'd you find <laughs> me? How'd you get here? How'd you end up coming to Bent Motorsports? Uh, I got out of the Army a couple years back and realized that being a maintenance and manager and public relations wasn't exactly my strong set. So my sister, you used to work with her, uh, she let me know. She actually showed me her Instagram. We were at the bar, and she's like, hey, look at this Land Rover. It's super cool. It's blue. You know, it has no fuses. And I was like, really? No fuses? That's interesting. Do you know what you're talking about? And then I came over. She was like, do you want me to get, me, get you an interview? And uh, came over here, interviewed with you. You realized I wasn't too much of a hack. Yep. So then after that, kind of worked there. Been here about a year now, actually. I think it's just been about a year. Right. It's been, it's been good. Learned a lot, right? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, the, we've got a couple other guys here. Uh, another Jake, Jake Russo. He's uh, He's been here off and on for a couple of years. Uh, Jake, why don't you uh, tell us how you found out about us? So basically, as weird as it sounds, I was on Google Maps one day, and I was looking for jobs, and I stumbled upon a monster Miata. And he kind of told me he couldn't use any help at the time. So he told me to come see Dave and see what he had going on. And then, uh, sure enough, I went in, talked to Dave for, I don't know, maybe a few minutes. Just kind of went over what I knew. And uh, a couple months later, uh, I believe I was working here. And then uh, that's pretty much it. And then I went down to work for uh, one of our other friends, Cord, who has a shop a couple doors down. And I kind of work on and off whenever these guys need help or whenever they need me to sub in, I'm here. So kind of just, I try not to be a hack, but who knows. Jake's learning. He's the, you know, the Jakes, we call them the Jakes, Jake squared. Yeah, we call them uh, that all the time. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, uh, they're both uh, up and coming in the industry, some people to look out for. Uh, Jake Russo actually is currently working for Bauer uh, Limited, uh, who uh, makes the catfish uh, conversions. They're like a Miata conversion. We helped with that company early on uh, doing their wiring harnesses and getting those cars squared away for, for their kit cars. And now Jake's over there helping assemble those plus various other projects. Those guys dabble in a lot of things. So he's in and out of the shop a lot in this uh, complex that we're at. Now the other guy that's with us, James Hernandez, he's kind of what we call the shop hang around guy. Uh, he's skilled. He's got <laughs> skills. We're finding out what the skills are as we speak, but yeah. uh, up and coming fabricator, uh, James? Yeah, you know, I've been hanging out with uh, Jake Hunsinger most of my life. Um, I think we've crashed, like, three cars together. So we're basically motorcycle drivers. Don't now. forget about the motorcycles. Uh, professional drivers, right. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know where the sponsorships are. So if, you know. And currently, I feel like I'm sponsoring you. Yeah. So. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might as well be. We just James need... is sponsored by Bent Motorsports and Team Mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Yeah, hanging out with Jake. Uh Love motorsports whole life. Um, my uh, older, my brother-in-law kind of introduced me to uh, off-road racing at a pretty young age. Um, he was uh, one of the lead fabricators on Toyota's off-road racing team a couple years back, uh, T-Force. And so he took me a bunch of cool races, and I was like, man, this is pretty badass. And uh, since then, just, yeah, sliding things sideways into walls and uh, getting in over your head with, uh, with your friends covered in grease. and. Love it. Without enough money. <laughs> That's, how That's how it works. That's it, how we all they do They go it. hand in hand. It's yeah. like no money and just getting covered in grease from like those late nights <laughs> oh, of wow. having like a 12-pack of Bud Light or Coors Light, you know, and just knocking shit out. Ain't nobody like, got money for that, man. <laughs> yeah. Colt 45, one. <laughs> <laughs> well, a quick background on Bent Motorsports. It was uh, started by myself and uh, my uh, business partner, who's now uh, moved on to other opportunities in Arizona. Um but we started it back in, uh, I want to say, 2013, I think it was official for Bent Motorsports. And we started out, he got a Polaris Razor. It was a, he had an 08, I think. Yeah, it might have been an 09. Anyways, it was just the old school 800 Razor. And uh, 
we worked on it a lot uh, in my garage uh, just for fun. And we ended up creating a long travel kit for that. Uh, that that at the time was considered a plus 10 over long travel and gave us 19 inches of travel front and rear. And it was pretty sick. It was what I would consider to be a true bolt-on kit. We spent a lot of time making that kit so it was bolt-on. Um, then we thought we'd start making roll cages, and we started the company Met Motorsports. I had an existing company at the time called Beckett Enterprises, and we just kind of uh, changed the name um, and uh, turned it into kind of an off-road UTV shop. Um, that market immediately saturated. We decided we didn't want to be in it. And then we, uh, branched out into other things. We were doing hot rods. We were doing, you know, lifting trucks, pretty much anything that would pay the bills that we could get through the doors. Um, then we started getting into wiring. Um, we both, my original business partner, Mark and I had a background in wiring from previous jobs. So we decided we'd start tapping into that world, and we did it a lot. We got a lot of uh, wiring jobs. Uh, we were wiring hot rods, sand cars, um, different things like that. But ultimately, uh, after it all came around and back to the beginning again, we went back to off-road, which is really what we love to do. So Bent Motorsports Off-Road is the official uh, direction now, and um, we focus on mainly Jeeps. We do Toyotas. We do full-size trucks. Um, anything that that's fun off road, I guess we won't, we won't turn that away. Um, now recently, uh, since now that we got all that out of the way, uh, and you guys can, uh, email us, uh, later for questions on the next podcast, but for this one, we're going to do a SEMA recap. This one is, uh, going to be fun because it's my, I don't know how many times I've been to SEMA, uh, too many to count. Uh, Jake Russo has been three, was it three, twice, three, twice, twice now? Last- uh, 2016 was the first year. Then this year was second year. Gotcha. And I mean, it's just unbelievable going there. Right. So he's got some input. Uh, I've got input after being, uh, there for several years. Uh, Jake Huntsinger has, uh, been there for the first time this year, as well as James for the first time this year and James for the first time to Vegas. So oh, yeah. he's got some, you know, probably got some perspective stories for us. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about this time. It's kind of a 2017 SEMA recap. And uh, we'll just see what these guys think, what they saw. Um, why don't we start off with uh, uh, Jake Huntsinger? Sorry, what, how, how do you, we got two Jakes here? How do I like we want to? Call, I'd like to call either Jake Beta or Russo. Russo, okay, I'll go with Russo. That's what I mean. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, I'll it's, just, it's simple. It's simple. I guess if you want Russo, so we'll have Jake I'll take. and we'll have a Russo. Okay, so everybody knows we try to keep you guys uh, apart. Uh, so Jake, what did you think of SEMA? This is your first time ever. You've heard a lot about it. Um, what did you think? It surely lived well. I mean, expectations were pretty high, but it sure did go past that. I mean, the place is just huge. You look at different places like the Del Mar Fair or, you know, whatever fairgrounds you're going to, or you go look at a car show, and, you know, there's 10, 20, 50 cars. You take a look at them, and you're like, you know, this is cool, this is cool, and you really get to appreciate, like, each one because they're all different. But you go to SEMA, and there's, like, I don't know, 2,000 cars, and you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, awesome. How am I supposed to appreciate all of these and still like really like one of them? Like someone asked me what my favorite car was and I'm like, I, I could not tell you. There's just, there's too much stuff there, you know? And I mean, they have everything from parts to tires, to wheels, to cars, to trucks. There's every single, I don't know, variation of a vehicle that you could want, whether it's the stupidest idea of a useless truck that's lifted 40 feet in the air and the drive shaft angles are so bad that they have to roll it. It probably doesn't even drive or, you know, the slammed F-250 that is just badass because it's badass, you know. So it was it was pretty awesome seeing some of the new products out there was cool, too. Uh, you know, from the burrito warmers to the different exhaust systems <laughs> and up and coming air shocks and things like you go into the I can't remember what that room was, the one with the free popcorn and oh, the, the uh, it's free beer and new, popcorn room. Yeah, it's upstairs. a new parts exhibit where yeah. basically all these companies they i think they compete for prizes and stuff they do they compete it's, for it's awards, awards of like the the top products of 27 so maybe now's a good time for me to jump in and tell everybody what sema is i'm sure a lot of people hear about sema they think they know what sema is maybe they know what sema is sema is specialty equipment manufacturing association is i think it manufacturing i believe so or is yeah it i mar- mixed it up oh, maybe marketing. It marketing it might be a marketing. special equipment marketing association either way the uh sema show is is devoted to showcasing new products and the new products for anything automotive um 
the people that go to SEMA are in the industry. There are people like us at Bent Motorsports who go every year to see what the new product is, to see what's new in the field so that we can then use those products in our shop on our customer vehicles. So it's an industry show. Um, it is open to the public on the outside of the, the, the halls, but to go into it, you actually have to have credentials. Um, but in all honesty, if you, if you go as just for free outside, you're, you're going to see a heck of a lot of cool stuff. Um, but that's the whole purpose of SEMA and why it started was to just uh, get everybody in the industry up to date on what's new. And it's turned into a, basically a massive car show um, and uh, a, a massive way to put out new products. And like they were saying, there's a whole hall where you can go in and see all the new products for the year just lined up and you can vote on those products as to whether it's a good new product. Some years I go in there and I see the same intake manifold over and over and over again. And sometimes I go in there and there's just something wicked new and it's, it's super fun. Technology drives a lot of this. So a lot of the stuff I look for is new technology, uh, whether it be switching systems for lighting or body control modules or anything that we can tap into and, and control features on the cars. I think those are the cool things. Um, but that's kind of what SEMA is. Um, and Jake Russo, yeah. what did you see there? What did you like this year? Um, well, just to elaborate first, I believe if anybody is willing to drive out to Vegas or if you're in the area, I believe Friday you can pay 20 bucks and get into the exhibit and gotcha. actually see the inside of the show instead of just walking around the outside. But, I mean, going from last year to this year, uh, not a terrible amount of change. I feel like it was a little bit bigger this year than it was last year, but just seeing everything. And I mean, you got to really, you got to really like soak in one car and you can't go through the, the halls too fast because you have, there's tents outside that are just gigantic. You could spend at least like five, five or six hours in just those tents alone. And that's not even going into the main hall. And so, I mean, every, the last couple of years I've tried to just stop at individual cars and kind of like, nitpick them and see what I like and kind of see just little tiny details that you would generally walk right past. And I've said this, I don't know how many times, but you know, you see an old school, whatever it is, pickup truck that's got probably a half a million dollars into it. And then right next to it is like a, a Ferrari with carbon fiber wheels and, you know, just the most radical body kit. And you kind of walk past the Ferrari, like, Oh, forget that thing. You know, I'm going right. I, I, noticed the thing. I was telling, I, I try to describe that to people. When I tell them about SEMA, I say, uh, imagine going to a car show at your local, uh, you know, Denny's or wherever you might go to a local car show and you see a lot of cool cars, but there's maybe one car there. That's a true, true diamond car that everybody is just gaga about. Right. Yeah. And there's a crowd around it. Well, now imagine going to a car show where all of them are that, they're all diamonds. They're all perfection. Yeah. You, you're walking by million dollar cars just going, eh, whatever, you know, I got to see this other million dollar car. So it feels almost, you know, sacrilege. You feel terrible about it. You They're actually feel terrible. Uh, you're not giving all of these cars the appropriate attention they need, but yeah. it truly is the problem with SEMA. We did it a few years back. Uh, my old business partner and I decided we were going to try to see all of SEMA, you know, finger air quit all of SEMA, right? So we started and it's uh, it's a Tuesday through Friday deal, right? So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days, and it's only open nine to five uh, and then they close the halls. So we would get there early and try to do outdoor stuff before the halls opened and then get into the halls. We were averaging between 15 and 20 miles a day walking for, for all four days and we didn't see it. I would say we saw 85% of it. It's just absolutely impossible to see it all. So we go there now with the uh, uh, idea of we need to see these manufacturers. We need to see these specific things that re relate to our industry and what could make us money and help our customers see what's new. So we definitely have an agenda when we go now, but uh, it's it's an awful lot of stuff to see. What do you think, James? It was your first year. There. Oh, my gosh. It was insane. First of all, the the – Las Vegas Convention Center is massive. It's like, I thought it was going to be big. It's at least three times bigger than wow, how big I thought it was going to be. And they have multiple skid pads. Things are going on, and, like, there's just so many people there. And, like, everywhere you look, there's somebody in the industry that you're just like, whoa, whoa, look at that guy. Oh. Yeah, I like. I got to meet uh, uh, Finnegan from uh, um, Roadkill, and I acted like a total idiot. I just didn't know what to say to him. <laughs> he built a really cool car, and I was like, hello, it has tires, yeah. 
And uh, there's a countless other people like, you should go talk to that person. I'm like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you just walk by these famous people. You're like, oh, Diesel Brothers. Like, I'm just standing like next to them walking through the door. And I'm just like, ah, what am I really going to say? What's it going to gain me? I mean, it's cool if I take a selfie right now. Like, cool, look at his beard up. <laughs> but they're all just car guys, right? We're, guys. So we're all cool. just guys. Yeah, we're all they're car so guys. Cool. We're all in the same place. I've stopped, stopped and talked to a lot of these guys. And they just want to talk about cars. I got to talk to uh, the guy who owns one of, one of my favorite cars there was a Mark II Ford Escort with a um, Mustang V6 on Olean suspension. And they're like, they're the top USA rally guys right now. And that guy was Buku levels of like smart. And he was just telling me about suspension. They've got like 12 inches of suspension on their all wheel drive uh, car with zero bump steer. And he was t- just showing me videos and trying to explain it to me. And I was just like, man, that's awesome. That's cool stuff. But yeah, you're walking by like, five hundred thousand dollar builds and stuff and just whatever i'm gonna go look at this thing and then you do you get on you get on some cars too this was we were talking about this you get on some cars where you it looks really nice and you get up close and you're like oh they cut a corner here like like that doesn't look so hot this doesn't look so good you're like there's no engine in this (laughs) (laughs) i've never seen it before and seen uh looked close at like low rider you know something that's slammed in there and it's laying on the carpet and it's in some you know, tire booth or something. And you look underneath and there's two by fours where there's supposed to be springs. Like they didn't get the build done, (laughs) but but that that, that sucker was at SEMA, man. And nobody, but who cares? You know, I mean, they're, they'll, you know, sometimes the SEMA builds don't make it. Um, So if we were to build, we'll go on to the next subject here, uh, which is unlimited budget SEMA build. If you guys could do any SEMA build you wanted, any car, anything you wanted to do unlimited budget, what do you think you would do? This is, I can't even answer this question, but I'm going to ask you guys. We were talking about it in the hotel room, like, first or second night, and we were, like, just trying to think of something stupid, ridiculous. I think we came up with an old four-door, like, 78 four-door F-Series, chopped into, like, a hot rod, just, like, push the front end out, put some big tires in it, and, like, put a giant 6.9 in it, and just boost the crap out of it. There were some, there were some really cool diesels there, and everything worth mentioning had a 6.9 in it, almost. Except for the million dollar diesel, that thing, I think, I'm, I think it was a Duramax, but the, <laughs> but that's just because that's what the badge was on. Was the million dollar yeah. diesel there? It, it was. was. Yeah, it was mad. Still was wasn't done. Awesome. Nope. Yeah. Still wasn't done. Still wasn't done. <laughs> yeah. How many SEMAs in a row now? Is it not? It was. Been done? It was far. It was a lot farther. Than is it, it yeah, paint on it? Like it had painted on it. So no, it, it still had the carbon fiber fenders. Oh. All the bodywork was carbon fiber, I believe. Oh, okay. But I mean, it had it had a good amount of interior that was in there, and like. uh I mean, the trans tunnel on that thing is just, it's got to be like three feet wide, you know? Yeah, that so. thing's going to be pretty sick when it's, I mean, it's sick now. I yeah. Mean, I think the CVs were like 11 and a half inches from edge to edge. <laughs> like I was looking at it and they're, they're freaking huge. They're massive. Yeah. It was really neat. Now, what about the, uh, the FJ62? Oh, the Merc one? The Merc diesel. That, that, that thing was cool. cool. So Didn't your buddy I do am, that? Uh, not really a buddy, but I'm, I'm kind of like a big time BMW guy, mainly the old ones. And so this company called CA Tuned up in Sacramento, they're they're kind of dabbling the off road, and they have been for the last few years now. Like they got an 06 Forerunner on one ton axles on like 42 inch tires. The thing's just massive, and so they build it. They built a FJ62 for the show that they put a uh, probably like a early 2000s Mercedes diesel motor in, and the thing was just rad i mean it was if anybody was out there it was at the toyo tires booth at in the front of the show but it was uh i mean it was just a clean truck it was one of those things where you would have no problem hopping in that thing and pretty much overlanding which was kind of the kind of the point of the build seemed like more of an overlander but the thing was just badass right yeah there there was i don't know if i and i can't pick my favorite car you know i don't know which one jumps out at me most um and I couldn't even tell you what I would want to build for a SEMA build. Um, I think you'd build a sick Jeep on, I don't know, what are those, 37s? <laughs> 355s, or 35s. yeah. Yeah, we, yeah this is a, we've got a shop build we're doing. It's uh, my Jeep. It's a, it's a 2006 LJ. Um, and we just wrapped it up today, as a matter of fact. So we're going to go out and start driving it around and uh, get it broken in and shake out any bugs it has. Um, we're going to start doing... Uh, youtube videos as well for our pie we'll do podcasts and we'll do video stuff so if you guys want to go over to youtube and follow bent motorsports on youtube uh there's a couple of uh, lame videos up there right now but hopefully we'll get some more quality stuff so you can see the builds we do and uh, maybe one day it'll be a sema build 
Um, sticking on the SEMA course here, I know we've got some other stuff. So let's talk about the things that you can do while you're at SEMA as far as the active driving stuff. This year they had a couple of extra stu- uh, extra things going on. Uh, Ford always has outside a, uh, a, a deal going on where you can go for a ride with a driver and you can go in a Mustang and drift around or in a, a Raptor truck and you can hit a little jump. Um, Chevrolet in the back has a Corvette area where you can jump in a Corvette and go for a ride. And then I think last year they started it. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before they started it, but Continental Tire started doing their BMW ride. Basically, they have a BMWs with Continental Tires, and you can go skidding around, uh, drift around with those guys. And then this year, for the first time, I think they had the Kia Stinger yeah, uh, that was ride across along. The street, so across the street from the convention center, you could actually go go for a ride. Then you could drive it. that one. You could drive it. Yeah, so you can even drive it. So so that's the first one I've seen where you can actually drive the car, not just get a ride. And you guys did that, right? Which one did you guys do? No, we, we did, did the BMW one. Yeah. So Continental Tires BMW ride along. Yeah. How was that? It was fun. It was really awesome. Like we got there real early. What was it? Tuesday morning. Was Tuesday, so right? there wasn't too many people there, and you know, you just get in the car and they go do a couple of hot laps and drift around and. It was pretty badass. I don't know. Me and James were having a lot of fun in that one. I'm super bummed I missed out on it. I was too busy talking about waxes and polishes with uh, oh, one of the companies. Too. What, that, yeah, it's what important are, to me. But it Russo was, likes to clean cars. Just he so does. He likes that's to cool. clean cars. And he doesn't like when you don't around. clean your yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah. So. What did the guy say to you before? Because you got there before me. To the, I was still signing in while you were like sitting in the car ready to go. What did the guy say to you? Oh, he's just he's just talking about how... Uh, you know, this is uh this is only my third lap of the day, so I'm just getting warmed up or whatever. Like, he, <laughs> I don't know if he's a pro driver or whatever, but he was pro to he me. Like, he's like, let's get reckless, and I was like, yes, okay, let let's do this. So. Mm-hmm. He proceeded to whip that thing. That was yeah, super got some fun. cool video of that. That was yeah, it was just exciting. Like, yeah, I haven't ridden a lot of newer BMWs. You know, I only read, ride around in the old ones that Jake decides to purchase. <laughs> so it was nice to see that some of them can actually be fast. <laughs> yeah, so well, let's speak it fast. Well, let's uh, hand this is perfect uh, to go into Russo's uh, dream build, right? I mean, we're talking about SEMA builds. Um, I know that when you go to SEMA, there's an LS and everything at SEMA. Pretty Every hood much. you see, there's an LS. Hey, look, guys, a Camaro with an LS. Oh, right? what do you know? But wow. Jake wants to put an LS in his BMW, right? And I think we're all for that. That sounds like a fun yeah. project. So, what's yeah, your plan yeah. with that? I basically I have a '83 533, so kind of like the old businessman sedan and uh i've just i've always loved old muscle cars my dad had a couple 69 camaros one of them was like the old school white and orange convertible pace car edition and i remember going around in that thing when i was a kid and just i don't know we've always been a chevy family so for me it was kind of like a natural instinct like i watched a little too much roadkill and watched them pretty much do a bunch of like big blocks and they pretty much just do a lot of V8 stuff, which I'm really down with. And so I was like, you know what? I want to be kind of a redneck, but I still like the German stuff. So I'm going to kind of combine the combine the both of them and see what happens. So it was kind of one of those things where what should I do? Well, LS is pretty much all over the place. Parts are readily available. Uh, they make good power. And actually, I'm probably going to shave about 100 pounds off the front of my car because I'm going from an iron block straight six to a aluminum block V8. So, I don't know. I just think it would be a pretty well-balanced car. I kind of want it to be more of a performance-oriented. I don't want to just make this thing go in the quarter mile. Like, I want it to handle. I want it to be fun to drive. I want it to be reliable. So, I think that's the route. I want it to go sideways. I want and, it to get I mean, built. Yeah, it'd be fun to make it go sideways <laughs> occasionally. That'd be cool, too. Well, with an LS, it'll go sideways. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any problems. More times that. than not. So, um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my build that uh, I'm trying to succeed in right now. So, I'm hoping, I mean, the timeline just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back, which is pretty normal in this industry for when you're trying to build your own things. So, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm hoping to sell my other car soon and start budgeting towards it. Yeah, you got that sick E46 M3. I know. I know. I really need to, as much as I love that car, and that's what sucks is that's been a childhood dream car of mine, and now I finally have one, and it's like... And you have to sell it? Yeah, but I want to build an LS E28, you know? Yeah, uh, <laughs> so which not? one Which one do you choose? It's like, it's like which one's going to be cheaper? Which one's going to be more reliable? Which one, you know, it's just there's so many things that play into it. I had a solid month. And I'm sure uh, the other Jake has heard all my nonsense, but I was going for a month, like, taking polls of people. Like, what one should I keep? Do you think I should do this or this, yep. this or this, this or this? And what was the answer in the end? 
The answer in the end is whatever you want, what right? What blows your skirt up. Yeah. You know? what, what, what blows <laughs> your skirt up, man. And what because you don't have to wire. Anybody, if you build cars for other people, you're doing it wrong, man. Just build whatever blows your skirt up, which yeah. which takes us to, to Jake's build. That, okay, I'm going to say Jake's build. Jake's build for the week. So every week, Jake <laughs> comes with a new idea or a new project he wants, right? I was that age once. I had those ideas once. I, you know, I'm married. I have kids. I'm, you know. I'm out. You know, I, I can't do that stuff anymore. So I got to live vicariously <laughs> through these guys and their builds. So Jake, what's your newest build idea for the week? I think it's the best one so far. With the Ford or the, the Comanche? The Comanche. I like All the right. Comanche more. Than yeah, that, yeah, honestly. yeah. Uh, well, I guess I kind of got motivated by uh, Von Gittin's little ultimate, fun, ultimate haver. fun haver. You know, he's got, it's four links. It's pretty much a pre-runner, you know, with the stock. I think it's just the stock EcoBoost motor. His is two-wheel drive if i'm not mistaken but four length in the rear it's got that camberg long long travel up front but it's bagged nobody bags their stuff he's got three two bypasses up front two two bypasses in the rear all airbags you know so he can come and you see him out there at sema drifting around and then you see him hit some jumps and you're like well that's cool it's kind of like the best of both worlds and my thought was kind of the same but i'm not well a i can't afford some of the newer vehicles and b i just don't find them as tasteful as some of the older ones so my idea was, you know, let's make an ultimate fun haver out of a Comanche. You know, let's do some airbag suspension, some long travel, you know. You take it down, you put some 31s on it or something like that and drive it down to wherever you're going to race at, whether it be autocross or, you know, just going to cruise through the canyons. You throw your road tires in the back, cruise out there, swap your tires out, drop the bags, and, you know, make it go fast. Which would yeah. be wouldn't be the first time we found a couple of old SCCA uh, Comanche race cars that actually did pretty good. So. Yeah, and those were four cylinder, and those guys were still pretty quick. Those, I know. What was it? The Riley Brothers. The like, yeah, it was. So, uh, Back check. I can't remember I mean, four, their four name. Four cylinders but... kill it in autocross, man. Autocross. I autocrossed for uh, I don't know the over fifteen years. I did it uh, down here locally in San Diego, and uh, my car I raced it was a 1974 Triumph Spitfire with a 1500 four cylinder engine. And, uh, that thing had massive amounts of torque because when you're racing in a parking lot, you don't need horsepower, you need torque and you can make any mortar have torque. So I, I think the Comanche build, that would be a fun little autocross car and you could take it out and go down some fire roads or even some more aggressive roads, pretty quick off road. Um, that would be a pretty, uh, pretty cool project. That'd be a fun thing to try to achieve. Not to steal the limelight from uh, Hunt Singer, but Dave was like heavy into the autocross scene. Although his company is more geared towards the off-road thing now, um, that doesn't mean he's he's exactly uh, out of the out of the industry for autocrossing. I mean, if you you look in his office and there's like a whole wall, and I'm sure there's even more trophies in the in the attic. But <laughs> I'm trying to get Dave to teach me how to race cars. <laughs> I'm really good at crashing them. Problem is, is I, 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 my addiction is motorsports. So right now I'm not in autocross, and I know if these guys sucker me into going down and driving a car, I'm going to be addicted again, and uh, my kids aren't going to get to go to college. So we're going to have to. <laughs> I didn't go to college. Look, here now. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go either, and I turned out pretty terrible. I mean, exactly. good. I turned out pretty good. <laughs> it was uh, that's the Archer Brothers. Archer Steve Brothers Mandy. got it. Well, we can and we can have a whole other podcast on autocross. I'd love to just sit here and you know chat about the days of autocross and what can be done and and how super fun it is. We can have my wife come in and talk. She's a two time national champion, SCCA Ooh. solo two. Uh, she's no slouch herself. So um, I don't have any national championships. So she likes to wear her national championship jackets around the house and uh, kind of flaunt it. Which <laughs> really sucks. It's a long drive home from Kansas when you don't win, and she does. Um, Jeez Louise. <laughs> hey, but, but, but who, who built the car, right? You built the car, though. Well, I built uh, the first car she started driving, and then she ditched us and went to drive for another team that had a 67 Lotus Salon, which kicked ass, and it was a real real badass uh, A-prepared uh, car. Um, so I can't take any credit for that either. <laughs> She's um, out. So let's uh, let's try to let's wrap up the SEMA talk. I mean, what else do we have at SEMA that we can uh, discuss uh, as far as? Oh, I know. Uh, this year it happened to fall on Halloween, which as it it does every every fourth or fifth SEMA, it falls on Halloween because in general it's the first week of November that uh, that SEMA is. So if if the thirty first happens to be on Monday. Uh, then, hey, you're in Vegas for SEMA and it's Halloween. So so not only was it James's first time at SEMA and his first time in Las Vegas, 
but we brought him to Old Fremont Street on Halloween night. So that's talk about a, a quick uh, a, a introduction to Las Vegas. <laughs> there was some crazy stuff going on there. I couldn't. I. I. We. We walked down. Uh, down and back, and that was enough for me. I. I was fully satisfied. I saw some freaky stuff there. And uh, everybody was everybody was dressed up. Uh, I was Larry Enticer from uh, the the guy, uh, the just gonna send it guy. Just send it. But I was in a bathroom, and there was a guy who was hell bent on me being uh, Joe Dirt, <laughs> and he like followed me out of the bathroom, and he was just yelling, "Joe Dirt Day, Joe Dirt Day!" And I was like, "Wow, all right, buddy." Um, yeah, and there was yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I bought a pack of cigarettes as my my uh, my what happens in stays, Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> he was quitting and now he's not so but you know it happens no that's in vegas buddy <laughs> that's vegas that's vegas and uh the other thing too is when we say we walked down fremont street and back that's not just like a yeah we just casually strolled through there like we pretty much had to fight our way through there was so many it was pretty, nuts to was butts. there was no room to walk you had to fight your way through a crowd that was a half a mile long. I think it's what is Fremont Street from one side to the other? Three or four blocks. It's like four blocks, isn't it? It's yeah, got to be. It's, it's got to be close to a half, half a mile. mile. It's yeah. got to be. And there, I just imagine there's just no room to walk. It's just literally shoulder to shoulder down that hole. So you're just kind of moving with the flow of the crowd, and all of a sudden you're at the other end two hours later, and you're like, okay, we that was turn fun. Go yeah. <laughs> yeah, I basically shotgun a beer on a guy. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. nope. he was, that was me. I was the that. guy. Yeah. He was <laughs> <true>. <laughs> Shirt still smells like beer. Um, so, so uh, SEMA. What else about SEMA? There was, there was just How about new pro- so much to talk about. What new, about products? new products? Yeah. What about a new product? Did you guys run across anything new that was that was different and exciting? Uh, then you don't. I mean, I see it every year, but I, I saw a rear steer Jeep JK. If we're talking about off road industry, and that was a, a a Dana build program. So Dana Axles has a build program where really? they'll send you all the components if you're if you're part of their build program. Uh, the axle tubes, the the you know all the ends and knuckles, and you basically stock all these things. And as you get a custom build in, you build the housing. Uh, and the axle for that specific Jeep, right? So you're not ordering it to fit a JK. You've just got all the components here and all the brackets, and you can either make it fit a JK or you can make it fit a Toyota or whatever you want it to fit. And in this case, I forget which company it is, and I'm sorry. I think, it, I, I think, think Spicer was right next to him. I don't know if Spicer had anything to do with it. I think Spicer that. and Dana are Oh, the yeah, yeah, company, yeah. But, got it. But there was a, the company that actually built the Jeep that's part of the Jeep program. I remember um, that. I, I, if I find it, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it, but... Uh, they did a great job. Uh, they're part of the build program, and they just decided to put uh, knuckles on the back axle that were steering knuckles, just like they would put on the front. And then they just had uh, PSC do some rams, and uh, boom, you got yourself. It was a uh, lot more simple than I than yeah what I've seen as far as we were yeah, before. Key fob too, so you could just auto center if you're driving on the freeway, or you could even he was actuating it with it, key fob. I think it auto centered after you went over a certain mile. An ten hour. miles per like, hour. It was oh, 10 got or 15 it. Fifteen miles an hour, yeah. and, and it auto locks centered, out. So. You're not crab walking down the road. Yeah, it's I mean just super cool, right? I mean, yeah. I, I I thought that was really neat and it's super simple and I know other people have done it. It's nothing new. Uh, but to see it on a, a JK and to, to see it be so simple, um, I thought that was neat. It seems like that's gonna be one of those things that we're gonna see in the next couple of years as being like almost almost kind of a, a household thing, you know. I'm I'm assuming we're gonna see a lot more pretty budget uh budget conscious builds that have these that have these rear steer kits on them they're so becoming more be, prevalent yeah. yeah it should be it should be pretty cool to see in the up and coming years so keep an eye out for that i think it'll be i think it'll be pretty rad we but saw there was one part it was actually i think it was a jk but it was converted it was a ifs so independent front suspension on it yeah. but with that one i mean the common issue with a off-road or long travel uh, suspension that's going to be all wheel drive or four wheel drive is uh, CV angles and your drive shaft angles up there. Um, but what they had done was they actually took pretty much from the opposing side of the frame is where the arms mounted from. So it wasn't like, you know, you had your left side arms, your driver's side arms mounted to the frame on that side. They mounted to the other side and that's where the pivot point was as well as that's where the output for the CV was. So with a longer CV shaft or with a longer drive shaft, you you have less, there's less angle throughout the, uh, I guess, kind of throughout like the, the old travel. Ford beam style totally. front end. Exactly. Because I, I looked under it and it looked like beams and I was like, oh, cool. That's, but with no camber problem. It's a Jeep with beams right. on it. Yeah, but it was a true uh, uh, unequal control arm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, IFS. It, it was mm-hmm. cool too. Off of, off of the mounting points had basically what looked like, uh, like portals. portals. Yeah. 
like dropping, and then they offset, and it squared up, and they had the video and everything. And I was like, oh, "What's well, yeah. how Hummer does it? Right? Hummer uses portal axles. They use and, portals, yeah, or portal hubs, just or... like sixteen feet wide. So Humvees right. always got to yeah. love love the taste of that. And an engine with no power because mm-hmm. right? oh, yeah. a gasser that's converted to diesel is brilliant. Yeah, awesome. No turbo. <laughs> You know, going through the atmosphere when you hit 55, it's <laughs> a little shaky. Anything else you guys want to talk about for SEMA? Anything else that uh, we're worth remembering? It's almost fun, too, guys, when you go like this year, they do the, uh, so the Baja 1000, is the Baja 1000 this weekend? Yeah, the pre-running is this. So today is November 14th. Um, so if you guys are listening to this, uh, this is November 14th. And I, I, I can't remember, but the, the Baja 1000 is going on right now, um, probably this weekend. And uh, so what they do is they have the qualifying for the Baja 1000 and they have a whole section outside for all the Baja 1000 trucks. So if you go to SEMA and you're outside, you can go into this section and you can see all the guys trophy trucks lined up. uh, And then at one of the nights, they actually go to the Las Vegas Speedway and they go out and they qualify. Um, And then they bring the trucks back and line them up again. And then when SEMA's over, they pack them up and head to Mexico, basically Um, go. I think they do more pre-running and then they do the race. So, yeah, it's another cool thing to go see at SEMA is is to to go to the Las Vegas Speedway one night and watch the all the Baja One Thousand guys qualify. I think uh, was it Robbie Gordon that qualified in pole this year? I, don't, I, I, I didn't follow yeah, I didn't either. I can't confirm that, but it was. Uh, I, um, you know, it's always fun to watch those guys drive because you know BJ Baldwin, all those guys, they're 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 crazy. I forgot the one, the only truck that mattered at SEMA was uh, Ivan Ironman Stewart's IRS uh, Toyota. That was cool was from the, back in the day. Yeah, the BFG exhibit. And even Race Desert knew it because this is the first, like, the first post they did at SEMA. And I think it was one of the only ones. It was just like, look, yeah. Ironman Stewart's IRS Toyota. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and we're walking. We were, Jake and I were really stoked on that. We've been stoked on that truck for, I don't know, like. 15 uh, years yeah, or something? I don't know, since we were kids. And, uh. Everybody was just walking by it. I'm like, do you not know what this is? Yeah. Do you know who raced this? Look at the rear end. Do you see this? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's independent. All right, whatever. Get out of here. Bunch of lanes. There's a uh, – um, I forget the, the lady's name. I, I, I've looked this up, you guys. Um, she used to be on – remember the TV shows on Saturday morning, the off-road show where they – Yeah, Power Block. Power and, Block uh, and Power uh, Nation. Just, just yeah. Sounds. Jessica Combs. Yeah, Jessica Combs, right? She's doing the Iron Woman this year, right? Yeah, she she's actually going to relive. Gnarly. She's going to do the Iron Man, like I, Ivan Stewart style. She's riding a bike truck. Oh, she's driving a truck. Iron okay. Man style, the whole thing this year. That's Wasn't he the sure only guy who ever? This year. He was the only guy to ever ride a. Who was the one who rode the motorcycle the entire Mouse way? McCoy. Mouse, Mouse McCoy. Mouse McCoy. Got uh, it. Which they also, speaking of, released uh, Dust to Glory two. Yeah, that's right. They they released that at the uh, at the SEMA show, right? Yeah. 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 That was which we meant to, of course. Which we missed, and I didn't get to see. Now, I did get to go. We we had a, a, another guy that went with us who, who stayed uh, late or 4.30 one night at the show for the for the Mopar booth because they had something they were going to unveil, and it was teased that it was going to be the new Jeep JL. And uh, it was. He stayed, and they released a picture of it. Wow. So, Super exciting. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he was a little bit bummed out about that, that they didn't have an actual picture. Jeep there. <laughs> <laughs> so there's huge crowd. They waited around forever, and at 4.30, promptly, they unveiled a picture of the Jeep JL. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. I think that's one thing that people kind of forget to realize, though, is, like, there's so much stuff going on at SEMA. Like, if you just stick around, like, once everyone starts to bail, because the outside doesn't completely close, you know, they, they close the whole showdown, but the outside's still kind of going on. There's a lot of fun little things that are happening. You know, you can't, you got to find a schedule. You got to talk to somebody, but like Pennzoil was having a little party out there and you go upstairs and you can still go and get free popcorn. So that's yeah, cool. And, and some beverages. And some beverages, you know, so there's definitely little things to entice you if you want to stay later, but you just got to find them, you know, they're I wish not I just broadcast. I wish I would have talked more to people about what was going around. Me too. Oh, yeah. Man. The dust of glory thing would have been cool. There was an after party right. on Friday once they closed everything out, like. There's right. a lot of cool stuff going on. And then on. Friday, too, everybody forgets. Well, not everybody forgets, but they, they may not know that all those cars, as soon as that show sets down at 5 o'clock on Friday, um, they're packing that place up. I mean, they don't stop. I mean, there's forklifts driving in. They are packing the place up, and they are cleared out of there. I don't know how quickly they do it, but I'm guessing that by Sunday, that place is a ghost town again. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing the amount of orchestrated things that have to happen to get that all gone. So what happens on Friday is they actually set up bleachers outside. And they parade all the cars out because all the cars got to get out. 
So you've got this row, this endless line, this parade of just gorgeous vehicles that maybe you saw all week long. Well, now you get to hear it. Now you get to hear it drive by. And uh, that's kind of a fun thing to do is stay late on a Friday night and sit there till midnight watching these cars drive out. It was. There's walking by a lot of cars there and just going. Yeah, yeah. that's one thing you're just like, huh. Yeah, yeah, you want to hear some of these hot rods. Some of these hot rods have just crazy engines in them. That Ford uh, GT that ran on three different types of fuel had 2,000 horsepower. Yeah, that thing. You're like, what is this, spaceship? Methanol was 1,800 horsepower, I think. And then E85, I believe, was 1,400. And regular pump 91 was 1,200 horsepower. Mad crazy. And it was supercharged and twin turbo, which had this really gnarly sound that was just like, wow. Yeah, I got a clip of it. Maybe we'll throw that in here and, you know, uh, that was unbelievable. And that, that kind of brings us to another point is like how many of the cars that you see at SEMA could you drive down the street or actually purpose built? Because a lot of people, yeah, you could build a $500,000 show car, but is it really like tuned to be able to be driven? You know what I mean? So seeing that Ford GT, it's like that thing is probably a bat out of hell. And it's like, how well do those guys have to get that thing tuned in for all three different fuels? That was really impressive. You know? So, I don't know. That's one of the things that kind of blows my mind. And I would love to get into tuning, but I know it's uh, quite a bit of work. So, it's one of those things where I give I give those guys props for being able to tune those things. Like yeah, tuning, it's an it's a art form. I mean, you got to have a special yeah. uh, uh, a, a special uh, set of patience to tune a car. Yeah. Um, but then the same thing be for aligning a car, right? Yeah. yeah that's I mean, right. Aligning a car is there's a, anything where there's a lot of do this and then check it and then undo what and you just did and do, do it, it again, again and then undo it and undo it and then do almost it. Almost everything on a car, actually. Yeah, pretty I much. Found out. I think so. You should do that. If you're not doing that, <laughs> you're a hack. Yeah, you got to be patience. Um, um, is one thing about me. I've been a mechanic pretty much my whole life, and and patience is the number one thing when you're working on cars because as we find here we always joke about uh bolt-on right yeah mm-hmm. every yeah. kid yeah, out okay. there is a bolt-on kit right i've never bolted a kit on in my life it's always had to have a drill uh, a hole drilled out bigger or something doesn't quite fit and and nothing against the manufacturers i know they're doing their best to make it bolt-on and whatever jig they're using to make these kits is not going to match my jeep that's been off-roaded and twisted and banged around right so so I get it, but then again, sometimes I don't get it because just minor, just minor clearancing, guys. I think so, moral of the story is you just have to. If you're going to be a mechanic, you have to have an open corner in your shop to throw things at, where you're not going to yeah. break anything. You know, right, so, right. I think so. You have to have a, you know, a good mechanic can have a punching bag hanging somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, or a guy like Russo to hang around. Exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. Just give me a dead leg, real quick. Somebody to hit. <laughs> Shut up, Russo. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. We've got to get the Jeep out. Um, we're going to do uh, it's the, kind of the start of desert season for us around here. So hopefully we'll get my LJ out to uh, Akatia Wells for Thanksgiving and shake it down and see how many things need to be uh, fixed or modified. But we did kind of a big build. We basically went from stock um, uh, and then put on a, a long arm uh, four link kit. So it, it should be pretty straightforward, but it's always, you know, when you get a, a fresh build, it's almost a little nerve wracking, breaking it in, getting all the uh, gear sets all broken in and making sure everything's going to work right. Um, it's a lot different when you're building something in stages and you just do one little thing and one little thing over the years or over the months. But when you just pull the trigger and do everything at one time, uh, it's kind of, you never know what's going to rear its ugly head. I in a way. Cause yeah. it's like, did I really tighten up that bolt? I yeah, I think, so. I think we've been through the Jeep uh, so. three times now, even though we mark the bolts that we've torqued, I still look at that bolt and go, I know it's marked, but I don't know. I'll just really check it one tight. more time, you know? <laughs> yeah. That kind of goes to the catfish too. We've been, uh, my boss cord, he's had the same car being built for the last, God, I want to say two years, pretty much since I started working here. Yeah. The one with the red frame. And I mind you guys, this is not, uh, because they're slow at what they do. It's because they're building other cars for work. This is their new, uh, shop vehicle. So this is their new demo car that they're building. So they will only work on that in between real jobs. Yeah. And I mean, in, in between that, it's like we had, we moved shops, which although it was maybe a hundred feet away that we moved, it still was just so time consuming, making sure the walls were painted, you know, like everything just sucked my time away. And I would love to see that car done. And we went up to Laguna Seca for uh, Miata Fest or 
Miata's at Mazda Laguna Seca. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And so we drove. I got to sit passenger. Real fortunate to do that because being on Laguna Seca is just a whole nother animal. And so now that I got back from that, it's like, let's get this car done. Like, I want to finally see this thing go in. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, we got to go through that thing when it's ready to start and run down the street. Like, we got to go through it and just spend a whole day bolt checking. Like, check this, check that. Check yeah. This, well, being, check a, that. being a mechanic my whole life, I, I, there people don't do routine maintenance and just routine safety checks on their cars enough. Um, you have to do it in autocross. You have to do it in racing. You have to do it in the off-road world. You always have to be looking for that loose bolt because there's one there's one yeah. somewhere there's always a loose bolt somewhere and uh regular everyday cars uh, they should be checked too it if you have a be. good mechanic yeah. that mechanic should be just you know put his eyes on everything while he's down there changing your oil so um we can have other uh, i think we'll do the you know the next podcast maybe we can talk about autocross if you yeah. guys want to talk about cool. autocross yeah. That'd be fine. um we can uh we can talk about the jeep because by then we'll have that shook down and uh, make sure that everything's good for that um, also we want to, uh, tell everybody again, you know, go to our Instagram, go to our Facebook page. Everything's just under bent motorsports. Just type it in and you'll find us, uh, go to our YouTube page and subscribe. Like I said, there's not a lot up there right now, but there's going to be, we're going to start doing videos on these projects and on these podcasts so that you can uh, see what we're talking about. Um, and, uh, I don't know guys, uh, anything else to add here before we wrap it up? Mm, I don't think so. I think. Oh, well, Yeah. SEMA 2017 was a success. Yeah, it was a success. Yeah. Everybody all ready for next year, 2018? It's just around the corner. It is. That's, it's funny because last year, I, and then all of a sudden we were going this year, and it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We just got back from last year, like, you know, a couple yeah. weeks ago. No, 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 that was a year. That was a year. Yeah, it's been so. a year already. Yeah, I got to book the hotels now. That place sells out fast. All right, so everybody, uh, don't forget to follow us on the Instagram and Facebook. I think it's going to be the best way to find out when we're putting up a new podcast. Uh, go to iTunes and look for us under Bent Motorsports and uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. Thanks for listening.